you tell me how people with uh, mental disabilities should be more included in society? Well, they definitely should be more included in society and their uh, human rights should be taken seriously because uh, we are still facing two challenges. First, that in the uh, creation of policies and in the implementation of services uh, for people with mental health problems, uh, the human rights aspect is not uh, really treated as, uh, as it should be. And also, uh, I must admit that the human rights community, the broader human rights community, often forgets about this category of people. So they are, uh, to some extent, the most forgotten category of Europeans because the, uh, when you look at kind of any list of human rights priorities for given countries, very rarely you find persons with uh, mental health problems or, or users of mental health services as a particular category at risk, uh, which needs to be which needs to be uh, uh, given uh, an adequate attention. Well, why are we often forgotten? Why are we forgotten? Is that because we are not a strong voting group? So what do you think? Uh, this might be part of the story, but it's definitely not the whole one. I think that it does have to do with stigma. But of course, as we heard in this conference, you cannot really remove the stigma unless you change the way in which the services are being delivered. Because, so, so of course, uh, so you know, in this conference, there is a, uh, uh, I would say, a broad consensus that services should be. Uh, as community-based as possible, as little institutional as possible, as, as non-restrictive as possible, allowing uh, every individual to be himself or herself as much as possible, to, to, be, uh, uh, to be an active subject in decision-making and not just a passive, uh, a passive object of someone else's professional intervention. And I would, I would even add that it has to be, to a large extent, de psychiatricized that is, that other, uh, other actors than just psychiatrists must be brought into the picture. And the, uh, well, that is a general agreement of where we should develop, and some European countries are further on that, uh, on that way, and some are really nowhere yet. I mean, if you look at particularly the countries in Central and Eastern Europe, which have a tradition um, of uh, very restrictive, very, very oppressive, large institutions, the ones which have communist governments, uh, the situation there has improved only very, very slightly over the last 20 years, and it can be considered a wasted opportunity. And what do you think that the European Union and WHO can do about changing uh, this way, changing things? Well, I represent neither the European Union nor the WHO. I am the regional representative of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. So, for instance, so my role is spreading the human rights message when speaking with uh, those who are, are in charge of healthcare policies, social policies, and so on. While at the same time, I think we have an in-house uh, challenge uh, inside the office of the High Commissioner that is to put mental health and the rights of people uh, in this category really on the priorities list and we have to admit it hasn't been there for the human rights community, uh, for the broader mainstream human rights community, uh, it hasn't been there sufficiently. It has been anecdotal references such as cage beds in Czech Republic from time to time, but there has not been systematic interest in, um, in the rights of of this uh, category of, uh, of persons at risk. So I think that that is where I see my role is to actually increase the, the knowledge and sensibility to this within the human rights institutions themselves. Okay. Uh, what if people think that they can uh, 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 make stigma less but not change uh, the psychiatric system? What do you say then? I beg your pardon. If yeah. people think that they can make the stigma less but they, a discrimination less but not change the system, I think that uh, that won't work. I, I think that you cannot change the uh, whole stigma problem just by public campaigns unless the system of uh, delivery of services is, is changed. And this is not just my opinion, this was echoed by many speakers here and many people who have been involved for 10, 20 and more years in reform of services, so they are obviously speaking from experience. It, it is one of the key words, definitely, uh, individual autonomy and dignity are others, but also uh, 
let's face it, uh, one of the problems is the lack of self-reflection on part of the of the psychiatric profession or, or parts of the psychiatric profession. And uh, what is needed is to a large extent to uh, bring the whole uh, concept from a paternalistic one to an interactive one where, where the uh, psychiatrist is not the one who takes all the decisions. I mean, we need to, to have the, uh, the, as I said, the uh, person whose, whose experience it is being actively involved in the decision making and in an individualized way because every case is different.